Unknown Learning is a collaborative project between artist and teacher Oliver Herbert and myself, Jose Campos, and the students that we teach. This video is documentation of an exhibition that took place with no physical audience. We wanted to explore our practice as artist teachers during the COVID-19 crisis for a direct material engagement, which we hope will act as a catalyst for wider discussion and reflection. One of the aims with our project, Unknown Learning, is to take the time to reflect how our relationship to our practice, pedagogy and materials has changed during this pandemic. As an artist teacher, I consider the creative work I do in schools and outside of schools as my practice. I don't make work in isolation in a studio. Because of this, I've had to reevaluate these contexts to understand how I continue making work. Whilst teaching remotely, I've been limited to materials at home to try and devise lessons for students that are achievable and engaging to them from a screen. Because of the students I teach, I have to imagine a range of contexts they might be in. The classroom setting as a space for learning is no longer a given. For example, do they have enough space, a tabletop to work on? Do they have glue or scissors? Are they looking after someone? Do they have Wi-Fi? Have they had someone affected by the pandemic that they're mourning? I started to work with materials found in the bedroom, a duvet, pillows, as a way of exploring the blurring of my two worlds, at home and classroom. The pillow paintings lay on a table, the height of a bed, except they have acrylic paint smeared over them. They sit as art objects, but a result of a limitation to materials. In my lessons, I tried to imagine the students carrying out tasks that were embodied because teaching remotely was so disembodied. I was investigating how we continue to work with touch and the body as a material for making work when we're being asked not to touch and remain in isolation. Teams as a teaching platform is limiting in ways if you try to hold on to the structures that were in place prior to remote learning. I found it liberating not to adhere to the six period day. For me, it's about celebrating and seeing this new context as a space of possibilities to learn in different and interesting ways. For our students, technology is native and a fluent way of communicating. What happens when we learn when we are learning as a group at different times and in different places? I hung a duvet almost like a wall that you can walk around. One side reads, school kills artists, and the other side reads, school makes artists. As an artist teacher, I've felt pressure to sit on one side or the other of these philosophies. Is the teacher the almighty knowing in the classroom, or are the structures of power oppressive? A blanket is intimate, like our values. But this wall is flexible, and you can choose to transgress its boundaries at any point. It's a spectrum. The foil desk is being preserved by the kitchen foil. The foil props up the illusion of the desk, but it is, of course, fragile and delicate. My name is Oliver Herbert. I teach at an academy in South East London. I would say my practice as an artist teacher has changed massively during the pandemic. The situation has afforded me and my students more time to focus on our practice in really unexpected ways. For years I've had ideas of like things I wanted to make, bits of sculpture on top of the fridge, half-finished drawings at the back of sketchbooks. The current situation has allowed a real sense of quiet reflection and a chance to relook at my practice. A lot of my work takes the form of these precarious towers, found materials glued, cable tied or just balanced on top of each other. The imagery that I want to explore is that of travel, luxury and fantasy, but there's always a sense of something stuck. That could be within materials, in a space or stuck behind skills that just can't realise the image that I want to create. 
For example, the sunny, optimistic visual identity of holiday airlines, really violently broken and intertwined with epoxy resin, engines and wings snapped off. Time has changed at the moment, and we no longer have the bureaucratic apparatus of school, the commute, the business clothes, taking the register and break duty. The work has definitely taken on a new resonance in the current climate. We're all stuck and we're all isolated. Like the towers I've been creating, there has been a futile pursuit to cater to old hierarchies and timetables, but the situation just won't allow it. It's been really fascinating working with the students in this new context. We've developed a new awareness of our own working spaces. In every image that we exchange, there's a palimpsest of how the image and the home intertwine together. The edge of a beige carpet, a kitchen tabletop, or the hand of a parent holding up a drawing. I'm really interested in my own work about how images can be trapped. For example, I've built up a tower of old digital photo frames which present ugly slideshows of my daily walk along the wild natural beach where I live. It's like the student's work is an expressive drawing, but it's kind of trapped within the interface of teams. Materials have transformed. For example, I made a water fountain out of these fluorescent ice poles that I might find in the classroom bin or catch a hyperactive student slurping on on the way into my classroom. I found myself looking at these as a really interesting material all of a sudden while shopping in Poundland. Communicating with students about their work has taken on a new dynamic. I've appreciated more how the group crits and and discussion of work in the classroom can be really elitist. Quieter students seem to have more access to the conversation in teams in the way of communicating through memes, GIFs and emojis. It seems more of a native, democratic way of communicating that sometimes I can't access, but that's fine. I'm hoping that this crisis will provide an opportunity where we've had to be more collaborative in our approach. The power dynamic of the physical space of the classroom is dissolved. We're sharing and discussing work in our own time and in our own spaces. I hope that this will transgress the old rules and more human way of working with young people will emerge. 